So it is my absolute pleasure to welcome each and every one of you here this morning. So as I look around, I'm seeing you know, a lot of you know, different outfits, different colors, you know, so you know, everybody is different and we have to appreciate you know, and respect that. But I think what has brought us here today you know, is our common interest in terms of advancing you know, the micro, small and medium enterprise sector, particularly among the um, youth, because that is what we do at the youth economy. You know, we focus on persons between the ages of 15 to 35. So it's my absolute pleasure to see everybody here today. And I would just like to encourage everybody you know, to you know, engage in networking, learn as much as you can, ask questions. There are no stupid questions. Um, you are not here by just chance. We would have you know, realized that after all of our interaction with the different young persons, our different beneficiaries, you know that there was a knowledge gap in terms of understanding you know, what, you know, what is my statutory obligation to the NIC, to the Inland Revenue. You know, how do I establish my business? So learn as much as you can, not only for yourself, so that you can also you know, assist other persons. So as we know, we live in an environment you know, that is dynamic, ever-changing. You have change in technology, you have markets changing, you have customers' expectations. And you know, nowadays, customers are more informed. You know, they demand more. You know, before you could have sent a, if you wanted to contact somebody overseas, you'd have to send a letter and wait six months. Now it's almost instant. And you know, they expect an instant response. So you know, you have to really move up with the times. And just permit me to quote um, Adam um, Toffler, who said that, the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. So I think you know, everybody here today has understood that, that message, you know, that you really have to you know, learn, relearn, and unlearn again. So this workshop is really designed to be interactive, collaborative, and most importantly, practical. You will have the opportunity to learn from experts, for instance, from the NIC, Inland Revenue, so I encourage you guys to really embrace this opportunity. And we are confident, you know, that after you leave this workshop, you'll be empowered. You know, you will, you'll be able to make more informed decisions. Now, please permit me to say thank you to our various stakeholders. You know, I could see some familiar faces here. And thank you to the team at the Youth Economy Agency for really taking this initiative. You know, that's going the extra mile. So I just want to point out um, Olivia. So Olivia, give us a little wave. So <laughs> It's really, you know, a, a team initiative, teamwork and collaboration. So I just want to say thank you to the team. I really appreciate, you know, the excitement, you know, enthusiasm when it comes to youth. Um, I'd also like to say a special thank you to our sponsors and, you know, the persons who have made this, this um, event, you know, a success. So I just look forward to the interaction and I, and I look forward to meeting you as we go throughout the various days. Again... I would like to encourage you to, you know, keep your mind open, you know, ask questions, you know, make the most out of this networking opportunity. So again, let us just, you know, come together and make this a success. So welcome one, welcome all, and thank you all again. Thank you so much, Brian. And uh, to let us know exactly what it is that we're going to be getting into this uh, coming week, uh, it is my absolute pleasure to introduce our support officer for training and development, Ms. Antibi Philip. Let me start off by thanking everyone for coming, especially our young entrepreneurs for taking the time of their busy schedules to be here today in an effort to acquire invaluable knowledge that will positively impact your respective business ventures. It is with great pleasure and enthusiasm that I welcome you all to the Youth Economy Agency's Business Readiness Workshop under the theme, From Idea to Implementation, Building Foundations for Entrepreneurial Success. Today marks the beginning of a journey designed to equip and empower young aspiring entrepreneurs like yourself with the essential tools and insights needed to start and grow successful businesses. The main objectives of this workshop are one, 
to provide our clients with foundational knowledge in key areas such as legal considerations of business, business registration, financial management, taxation essentials. Two, to foster a supportive learning environment where our clients can network with peers, share the experiences and learn from industry experts and to inspire and motivate you, our clients, to pursue your entrepreneurial aspirations and to approach challenges with confidence and resilience. As we gather here, it is essential to recognize the ever-evolving nature of the entrepreneurial landscape, characterized by both opportunities and challenges. The demand for additional support and guidance in navigating the complexities of operating a business within our current market landscape has been a driving force behind the creation of this workshop. Over the course of this week, we will delve into the vital areas such as legal considerations, business registration, social security, financial management, taxation, and more. Our esteemed partners from various agencies and organizations will share their expertise and insights, providing you with practical knowledge and guidance to launch and grow successful businesses. Through interactive presentations, group discussions, and practical exercises, you will have the opportunity to engage with experienced professionals, industry experts, and successful entrepreneurs. This workshop is not just about acquiring knowledge. It's about igniting enthusiasm and empowering you to pursue your entrepreneurial dreams with self-assurance, confidence, and perseverance. As we embark on this journey together, I encourage you to make the most of every opportunity to ask questions, engage with your fellow participants, and to take proactive steps re towards realizing your entrepreneurial aspirations. Together, we can build a vibrant entrepreneurial ecosystem that drives economic growth creates job opportunities, and fosters innovation and creativity. To all our participants, I commend you for taking this bold step towards your entrepreneurship. Your determination and passion are the driving forces behind our collective success. With that, I wish you all a productive and enriching experience at the Business Readiness Workshop. I urge you all to commit to this transformative initiative and let us seize the opportunity to learn, grow, and inspire each other as we embark on this exciting journey together. Thank you. Thank you, Aunt Ivy. That was excellent and really, I think, set the tone for the remainder of this week. One thing Aunt Ivy did miss, though, was that we have prizes. <laughs> so we have daily prizes and we have grand prizes at the end of the week, which are going to be given um, by the training and development team, and uh, they are going to come from a selection of our sponsors. And our sponsors include Heineken St. Lucia, Massey Stores, Bay Gardens Resorts, Lovely Makeup Artistry and Image Consultancy, Golden Touch Spa, and Blue Waters. A round of applause, please, for all of our sponsors. Very, very important that uh, we get the support from the rest of Corporate St. Lucia. Hopefully, um, in uh, the years to come, we'll be seeing some of you sponsoring future business readiness workshops. We also want to give a shout out to NIC, the National Insurance Corporation. They have an information booth outside. Please go to them during the break and find out more. They will, though, be doing uh, uh, 
presentation this afternoon as well. So uh, we look forward uh, to, uh, to their participation and we thank them very much for coming on board. A round of applause, please, for the NIC. But it is time for us to get the show well and truly underway. I think we have uh, uh, quite a few participants in the room. That's good to see. And uh, we're going to start this morning with a lady whom I think uh, many of you would know, um, especially those of you who would have done uh, business planning and uh, um, done other programs with us over the past year. She's been involved with the Youth Economy Agency um, throughout the past uh, 12 months plus, and uh, she is an entrepreneur in her own right. She is also a business coach and uh, she is going to be doing a session on entrepreneurial mindset. It is my pleasure to welcome and I'm sure you will join me with uh, rapturous applause in welcoming Ms. Cindy Emmanuel McLean. So as Terry mentioned, my name is Cindy Emmanuel McLean and today I will try to share with you some of the experiences and some of the knowledge that I've gained over the last 40 years. Um, I know I look young, but I'm very long in the tooth. I started working at the tender age of 16. And from that day, I've been working almost every day since. So that's about 40 years ago. Please don't pull out your calculators to see just how old I am. Um, and I will try to share as many of the experiences and the knowledge that I've gained over the last 40 years with you. The great thing about experience is that there is a lot of it out there. You don't have to go through every single thing yourself. You don't have to make every mistake yourself. You don't have to stumble over every block yourself. Because those of us who came before you have done it. And if you take a little time, take the opportunity to listen, take the opportunity to engage, you can avoid some of the mistakes that we made. And hopefully, by the end of this session, there are about four things that I want you to be able to take away with. One is that you'll be able to tune in to your own station. All of us have a station that we have playing in the back of our heads all the time. I listen to RCI all the time. Why? Because my now husband used to work at RCI. So when I met him, I would tune in to RCI every day. And it became a habit. But that's an outside station. But in my head, I have a station that plays all the time. What am I going to do tomorrow? What's going to happen with my future? Is my business going to succeed? What's happening with the world? Will the government change next week? All those records keep playing in my head. So at the end of today's session with me, I want you to tune into your own station and start listening into what are some of the records that keep playing back in your minds over and over again. And not only what they are, but how do they affect you? When the thoughts run to your, through your heads, how do you feel? How do you react? What do you do? Are they thoughts that are bringing you forward? Are they thoughts that are holding you back? Are they thoughts that are creating an environment that allows you to thrive and to succeed? Also, to recognize and seize opportunity. So I give you one tip bit today. Walk into a room, go to the front of the room. You go to a meeting, there is a table, don't sit at the far end of the table. Sit as close to the head of the table as you can. Let somebody tell you that I have reserved that seat for Mr. Vidal, so can you move? And don't move back, move across. What does that say? What does that tell you? It tells you and it tells the other people in the room, here's a confident business owner. Here's a confident entrepreneur. Here's somebody that is ready and willing to take a part in the discussion. When you hide yourselves in the back of the room, what are you saying to the people around you? You are saying to them, mm, she's not sure. He's not sure. He's not ready to be part of that process that is going on. The third thing I want you to be able to do when you live here is to know yourself and be yourself. That might seem very trivial, because all of us know ourselves from the day we're born. So I know myself the longest in this room. 
No matter how long you know me, I know myself the longest. I'm not sure if I knew myself while I was in my mom's womb. Not sure. But I know from the time I was born, I know myself. But you'd be surprised what it means to know yourself and even harder, be yourself. And last of all, I want you to take away at least one action that you can start doing as of today that you were not doing this morning when you woke up, that you were not doing yesterday. Deal? Deal. So, um, let me see if I can work this. Today we're going to talk essentially about embracing your entrepreneurial spirit. So who am I? I said I'm Cindy Emanuel, but that's just one dimension. That's my name. I'm a teacher. When I left school at 17, my mom was the principal of a primary school. And she said to me, you girl, you're not staying in this house. You're coming to teach. So she took me back in the day, way back in the day. It was easy. The principal just decided, I want that person to teach with me. I want that person to teach with me. And they became a teacher. So that's how I started off my career as a teacher. And when I came in, I was scared, I was timid. So I begged my mom and I asked her to be the teacher of the kindergarten class. That was the five-year-olds who just came in. I came from a family of nine. I have eight brothers and sisters. So I was accustomed to dealing with chaos, a big group of people running around screaming, fighting, everything you can imagine. So I thought I was well-placed to be a kindergarten teacher. And she allowed that to happen. I'll tell you a little story about that a little later. I'm also a mother. I'm a mother of four. I made two kids my own. My husband came into the relationship with two, so now I'm a family of four. I'm a mother of four, sorry. I'm a master of public administration. I went to school, that's what I studied. I'm a reader of romance novels. I've been a reader of romance novels from the time none of you around the room would know. Meals and Bones. You know? They're still around? No, but you just heard of it, right? Yes, I used to sit in class, and inside of the chemistry book, there was a Meals and Bones under the desk reading, and I've never stopped that habit. I'm still reading them. I'm not hiding anymore, though. I'm a big sister, I just told you. I have seven brothers and one sister. I'm a business owner. I'll tell you a little bit about that um, a little later as well. I think I'm a friend extraordinary. I have about five friends. So the word hasn't gone around the world that I'm the best friend you can have. Only five people know that. But I think I'm a terrific friend. So I thought I would put that in there. I'm a consultant, mentor, a wife, a public speaker. Just today, I got that cred. I'm a facilitator. I'm an introvert. I'm happy as I am an introvert. I'm happy as by myself. I'm shy. This I'm doing there is something that I had to teach myself to do. You probably can see it, but I'm shaking like crazy. If I try to hold anything up, a glass of water, it'll be spilling all over the place. I'm shaking. I'm very much of an introvert. I describe myself as a business mechanic, and we'll circle back to that in a little while. I was a principal, and I'm, I think I'm an operations guru. Not everybody might agree. So as you can see, I identify myself as I identify as several different things. What do you identify as? So I want you to introduce yourself right now by writing down a list of words that describe you. This is my list. What is your list? I'm going to give you five or so minutes to just write your list of words. What do you identify as? Who do you identify as? Everybody has to do it, huh? I see some people looking like I ain't that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so 
right? As many as you can, as you can think of. Remember, we spoke about know yourself, be yourself, tune in. Tune in to your station, tune in to your frequency. What do you identify as? Who do you identify as? Just another minute or so. And Tabby, you behind. You come and write a list of who you identify as. <laughs> I'm just joking. Okay, so it, it doesn't matter if you didn't get everything down. It, I think what you have will be enough to illustrate what I want to do. So now we, I want a brave volunteer. The first one who wants to come up here and read out his or her list. Great. And the rest of you, for each person or characteristic she identifies as, check your list to see if you have it. And if you have it, you cross it off. Yeah? So she's going to read. She's going to give you the first word. If you have it, cross it off. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, my first word is mother. Give them a chance to check your list. <laughs> you have a mother? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I have entrepreneur. First responder. Social media and engagement specialists. We give them a chance to cross out if they have it. Go ahead. Um, a trainer. Ambivert. A go getter. And information enthusiast. Okay, so thank you. You're welcome. All right. <laughs> Next person who has uh, on their list that the thing, um, things that are not crossed off, eh? Come on. One second. So we're just going to continue until either we have nothing crossed off, um, everything crossed off, or one unique word left. Go ahead. I just want one crossed off. That's, give me the rest. All right. Mm -hmm. um, I'll start from the bottom up. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, I wrote, it, I wrote it last, but like they say, last but not least, I'm a God-fearing man. Um, I'm hold a, on, hold on. So God-fearing, speaking to the mic. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm a God-fearing man. Okay. So God-fearing man, if you have Christian or anything like that, you can cross that off. I'm an adventurer. I'm a big brother. <laughs> a good friend. A business proprietor. An organizer. I'm a leader. 
a good listener, a great father, and a great husband. <laughs> I see how he got to be the great husband. <laughs> Anybody else with something not crossed off? Once you have things on your list not crossed off, come. Um, I have a teacher, karate instructor, a coach, business owner, music artist, a writer, a protector, and a fighter. Let's keep the ball rolling. You don't need to wait for my permission anymore. Tip number two, do not wait for permission. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So I am a manager. I am a baker. I'm an introvert, a music lover, and a creative. Good morning. Okay, so I'm a wife. I'm a certified breastfeeding specialist. I'm a great learner. I'm also inquisitive. I'm an ambitious individual. I am self-sufficient. I'm the youngest sister. I'm an aunt and I'm a daughter. Anybody has everything crossed off on their list? Not yet? Okay. You have everything crossed off? Okay. All right. No problem. Who, who else is coming up? <laughs> okay. Good morning. I'll just say those that I don't have crossed. That's right. Evolving. I'm a caregiver. I'm a nurse. Overthinker. <laughs> <laughs> Love. Young. <laughs> so, um, guys, please remember to cross off your owner. Yeah. Don't wait for permission. If you're waiting for permission, so, it's a long time. <laughs> good morning again. Just wanted to take part in the activity too. <laughs> Didn't want to be left out, yeah? <laughs> so I have, um, I'm a brother, team player, humanitarian, finance professional, consultant. And I have comrade. Meaning I'm part of a very great organization and you know I believe in brotherhood. Okay, thank you. Good morning everybody. So I have oldest sibling. But you had older. Oh. Somebody said sister and brother. Oh oldest you she said younger. That? Okay. Oh, you want to be the oldest? Well, I am the okay. oldest. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I have passionate, I have silly slash funny and positive. Right. Okay, so guys, let me clarify the rules a little bit. I don't want to know how you feel. I don't want to know what type of person you are. I want to know who you identify as. So more of a role. So let's do a quick scan of your... Of your of your list, cross out anything that's not a role, a role that you play, a role that I can call you up to play on any given day, or a role that you have played before. So let's sanitize those lists a little bit that way. Who's next? Good morning, everyone. I'm an administrator, a travel advisor, a pastry chef, and a singer. Okay. I'm not seeing anybody. Does that mean that everybody's crossed off? Joel, you'll come after. Good morning, everyone. Um, gifting specialist, a leader, and a model.
Good morning. The only two that's not crossed off is leader and public speaker. Oh, are you are walking while you were still being crossed off leader. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, guys, does everybody have something crossed off on their list? Does everybody have more than three things crossed off on their list? Okay, great. So what that tells, what, what, what does that tell you? What does that tell you? We have a lot in common. And we're all so unique. Anything else? Sorry? There are things that we can possibly learn from each other. So look, I hope this stays. Look at these two profiles I have there. Why are you fancy like this? What do you do? What do you? I think I put the wrong transition. Both are male. Both are born in 1948. Both were raised in the UK. Both have been married twice. Both live in a castle. And both are rich and famous. But are they the same person? And they have the exact same profile. So what I want you to take out of that is as an entrepreneur, you do not need to be worried about appearing to be the same as somebody else. Because even if somebody describes you, and on paper, like King Charles and this other guy, Y'all may appear to be the exact same person, but really and truly, it's two entirely different people. So in your entrepreneurial journey, do not worry about, oh, this person wants to do the same thing with me. Oh, this person wants to be like me. Oh, this person wants to do my business or steal my business or do the same thing I am doing on paper. And looking out, it may look the same, but that's not what makes the difference. What makes the difference is who you are. Know yourself and be yourself. So, just to reiterate, just because the facts about us are the exact same, that does not mean that we are the same. Who you are is not a sum of your parts or not what people see, but who you know yourself to be and who you exercise being all of the time. So I want to tell you a little story about 2013, which was like a pivotal year in my transition as a human being, in my transition as an entrepreneur. I had worked all my life before. I'd worked as a teacher, like I told you. I'd worked as a principal. I had worked as a consultant for a number of years. But I had always worked with a boss. Somebody telling me when to show up. Somebody telling me what to do. Somebody telling me how to do it in some cases. But the one thing I knew about myself is that I never worked for anybody. I always worked for Cindy Emanuel Buckley. Always. I remember one time, before 2013, it must have been about quarter to six in the evening, and a young gentleman in the office where I was working came in to say goodbye that he was going because he worked down the hall from me. And he said to me, Cindy, what's wrong with you? Why are you always working late? You're working late for these people all the time. And I said to him, and I've always said to young people who I encounter, don't ever work for anybody. Because my mindset then is that the harder I worked, is the smarter I became. The, the more work that I took on is the more skilled I became. So there were projects that were happening in the office that had nothing to do with me and nobody wanted to do them, I would put my hand up, not because I was working for these people, but because I was working for me. I was adding to my resume. I was adding to my, my skill set. I was adding to my knowledge set. 
So in 2013, when I decided to immigrate to Canada, I had decided that I would go and do a second master's degree because I felt that I was not, I didn't see what the relevance of what I had been doing in St. Lucia and in the Caribbean to the Canadian environment. And I decided to connect with a career coach. And in working through my resume and working through my plan for the future, I said to him, one of the things that I was afraid of is that I had never been in one job for more than five years. By the time it hit three, four years, I was bored out of my skull. I didn't want to do it anymore, so I left. So here I had a resume that showed an unstable person almost. You were in that job before five years, you leave, you go to the next job, and you go to the next job, and you go to the next job. So I saw that as a disadvantage. And I was saying to him, well, I don't know, I think I probably have to go and do another master's degree to educate myself so now I can present myself as brand new. So I'm freshly qualified in this, that, or the other. And he said to me, go back and do an exercise for me. And tell me, what is the one thing? What is the thing that you did consistently no matter what job you were in. And for days I puzzled over it. I couldn't understand what he was after until I started to map it out and write it out. And I realized that no matter what job I did, no matter what project I was in, I was solving problems. I was fixing things. So as a teacher, when I did kindergarten, I got so attached to those kids that I couldn't let them go. So I taught them again in, in, in um, I, when I, I finished kindergarten, yeah, sorry, I wanted to be a better teacher. So I went to teacher, teacher's training college. I was 18, barely 18. And when I applied, they said to me, you can't come to teacher's college. You have to be at least 18. That's our rule. And I said to them, why? Why is that a rule? Where is it written that it's a rule? It's not written anywhere. It's just a rule. I said, I want to come. I begged, I pleaded, and I went. I'm barely 18. I spent two years. So when I went back, those kids that I taught in kindergarten were just going to standard one at the time. And because I had a little privilege, not, not a lot, it was my mom. So I could go home and cry to her and tell her, can I teach those children again in standard one? She told me, yes, I could. So I taught them in standard one. And I taught them in standard two. And I taught them in standard three. And come time for standard four common entrance exam, you're talking about a young teacher. I barely taught for four years. And there was one teacher at the school that was seen as the specialist for common entrance because she could get those children to write common entrance and pass and all of that. I said, I want to teach my children. By that time, it's my children. Because I teach them from the time they're in kindergarten. I left for two years, but I come back, it's my kids. Nobody else can teach my kids. I want to teach my kids. And my mother told me, okay, the principal, sorry, not my mother, sorry. The principal told me that you can teach them but you have to make sure that everybody passes. A challenge down my road. So here I was with a set of children all over the place. Some were bright, some not so bright, some don't care, some were troublesome. But I was given the challenge that everybody had to pass. And I decided, how will I teach those kids? How will I make it? I just can't understand. And all of you have written common entrance, I would suspect. The hardest thing is always the essay, yeah? You can pass the maths. It's, it's not difficult. You can pass it. You can pass the multiple choice, because if you guess right 20% of the time, you probably will pass. It's the essay they get you on all of the time. So I decided, here's what I'll do. On the first day of the term, I told everybody to write an essay. These kids looked at me like, who's this crazy woman? You haven't taught us essay writing. 
writes an essay. So you can imagine, I got essays that were a page long, I got essays that were two sentences long. And I used that essay as the teaching tool for the term for English. Out of that essay came grammar. Out of that essay came composition. Out of that essay came subject and, and verbs and adverbs and all of the stuff that you needed to do. And I had to almost hide to do it because that was in the curriculum that the Ministry of Education gave. But what I didn't realize I was doing at the time is that I was solving a problem. I was solving a problem. The curriculum wasn't working. The kids were not at the same level. I was solving a problem. I got to be a principal of a secondary school at a tender age, the youngest at the time. How did I do it? Didn't plan it. Didn't think it was going to happen. Tell you, I was a recently divorced young woman and I got an acting principal role at a primary school. I didn't know it was a Catholic primary school. So I acted there for a term or two and then they advertised for the, for the job. I got an interview, but a little birdie told me, girl, you're getting a job. You ain't Catholic enough. You get divorced, there is no way you get in the job as the principal. I went to the interview anyway. And one of the interviewers asked me, what have you done at the school that is different, that is innovative? Why would we even consider you for the role of a principal? And I said to him that the school had streams. You know how they used to put us in ABC? A for the bright ones and C for the dumb ones? They used to do that to us all the time. I think they still probably do. All right. So I thought that was the most outrageous thing I could imagine, like separating all children are getting ready for a common entrance exam, but you have a set of 35 by two because you had both standard four and standard five. So you had a set of 40, um, 70, sorry, that you virtually told already, you're not going to make it. You're in C. And I could see the teacher's attitudes towards the A's was different to the B's and definitely different to the C's. So what did this girl do? She put all the names in one bag and she pulled out names from the bag and put the children in whatever class that their names ended up in. It wasn't alphabetical, it wasn't logical, it wasn't anything. And then, I went through the teachers and everybody who had a strength went to those classes and taught to their strengths. So if you were a great math teacher, you taught, you taught math to group one, two, three, four, five, six. And more than that, I gave them group names, not letters or numbers. Because if you give me A, I think I'm better than B. If you give me one, I think I'm better than four. So there were sunflower and daffodils and whatever. And this man said to me, how dare you? How dare you? We have a system. Who do you think you are that you can just take that system and change it around? And I said to him that I wasn't thinking about the system. I was thinking about what is best for the children. And he said to me, go out there, sit there and wait and I will call you back later. And here I was, I was sitting there seeing all the other people going to interview for the job. I saw the lady I knew that was going to get the job because a little sips here tell me already she was the most Catholic of them all. I know I ain't getting no job and I figure, well, maybe he's having me wait there so that he can fire me. Because how dare you have daffodils and sunflowers in my school when it's A, B, and C you're supposed to have. Eventually, he called me back, and he offered me the principal position of Angers Secondary School, which was when they had all the new schools. It didn't exist at that time. It wasn't ready, but he told me if I wanted the job, it was mine. Why? Because I dared to solve a problem that I saw. Guys, I'm telling you all of that to help you understand that in your entrepreneurial journey, 
if you are not solving a problem, if you are not going true to yourself, if you do not recognize what you are good at and doing it, then you're probably not embracing that entrepreneurial spirit that you all have in there. And then take a little while, tune in to your, your frequency and think what I get up to do every day, what's my purpose every day. It's not baking the cake or making the music or I don't know what other businesses you all are in or doing the decorations or, or um, teaching people how to lactate. That's not what you're doing. Behind that, behind that, is where your entrepreneurial spirit is. What is it that you have done consistently for your life, which is what you are the best at? Am I making any sense? All right. So maybe this works going forward. So I've been throwing that word around for a while, entrepreneurial spirit. What is it? It's about making waves, not riding them. It's not about making waves, not riding them. Can you surf? Can anybody here surf? No? No? Nobody can surf? Okay. I can't surf either. either. <laughs> I can't surf either. But surfing means you go on a surfboard or whatever they call, and you ride the waves that are already there. No? But being an entrepreneur is not about that. It's not about taking advantage of something that's already there. It's about creating those waves. Creating something that's not there yet. You make them and then you ride them. <clears throat> Having entrepreneurial spirit is not just for entrepreneurs. I was a teacher. I was an acting principal. I was a mother, I was a brother, I was a sister. I'm a sister of two sets of twins. When mommy left and daddy left and I had to babysit two, two little ones, it's harder than one. So you have to, it's not your, your, your entrepreneurial spirit is not because you're an entrepreneur. It's because of the way you approach life. It's because of the way you approach things. It's because of the way you think. Are you just going with the flow? Or do you see something that needs doing and you do it, even if it bucks tradition? Even if it bucks the norm? Even if it seems crazy to some people? When this guy sat in his garage drop out of school and start sat in his garage and start tinkering with this machine that each of you have one of, one of them in your hands today. Everybody thought he was a madman. Now it's, it, it's advanced to the point that nobody can walk around, including this young lady that's not listening to me and playing on hers. Nobody can walk around without those machines in their hands right now. Yeah? So it's not just, don't think, I'm not an entrepreneur, so I don't have entrepreneurial spirit. No. Or I had a business that failed, so I'm not an, I don't have entrepreneurial spirit. No. We all have it. We just have to tune into it and be able to recognize it when we see it. So small business owners, working pros, everybody can join the fun. If you have entrepreneurial spirit, you embrace fear. You live in a constant state of fear because you're always doing something different. So will it work? Will people like it? Will people buy it? Will people pay me for it? Will I lose my money? Will the bank finance it? Will Ye take me on as a client? There is always that fear, but the trick is to embrace it instead of running away from it. Because the people who are not in this room, who have had a business idea, who have had the inclination to start a business, is because they're running away from it. Hmm? So, 
This entrepreneurial spirit that I'm talking about, what do you think? Are you born with it? Some are born with it, some learn along the way. Some get it, it's inherited, passed down. Some, it has to do with the environment, maybe. Are you born with it? And if you say, yes, you're born with it. If I wasn't born with it, am I doomed to not to have it? Hmm? I was born with that nose on my face. I can change it. I was born with that complexion. I can change it. Almost anything I was born with, I can change. So, even if you believe that people are born with an entrepreneurial spirit, you can change it. You can get it. And then the other question, obviously, is, am I taught it? And even if you were born with it, anything you're born with, it's not fully honed. It's not fully honed. It has to be developed. It can be developed. It can be improved on. You can be born, I know, fantastically intelligent people because they're born with it, but they don't use it. They don't use it. And people who were born with far less natural abilities are surpassing them every single day of the week. I think I can run faster than Julian Alfred. I know, I know I can. I know I can. The problem is I don't train. I don't eat right. I don't train. I run, I run. Yes, I just don't train as hard as I eat right and at it every day. But if I start, you all will not be calling Julian Alfred, you will be calling Cindy Emmanuel McLean. That's the, same, that's the same thing. That's the same thing. You can always, there is almost nothing that you can't do. Because if there is one single person in the world who has done it before, all it tells you is that it is possible. All it tells you is that it's possible. And it doesn't matter where you start. I sound like a bunch of cliches at the moment. But cliches are cliches because they are true. It doesn't matter where you start. It matters where you're going to end up. Yeah? So you can be taught that entrepreneurial spirit. And hopefully, my, my hope is that something you will take away by the end of the day. You may not be able to take everything. You may not be able to implement everything. But one or two will help and you'll be further along than you were when you came in this morning. So the question I want you to ask yourself now Am I an entrepreneur? All the people who had entrepreneur on their list this morning, can you stand up? Yeah? All right, give yourself a round of applause. Thank you. Have a seat. <clears throat> All the people who had business person, business owner on their list, stand up. If you had business owner, business person on your list, stand up. Give yourself a round of applause. All right. Hands down. So, am I an entrepreneur? Remember my list? I didn't have that on my list, though. Not every business owner possesses the entrepreneurial spirit or identifies as an entrepreneur. That's okay. That's okay. Because the aim here is if you did not identify yet, 
Hopefully by the end of the day, you will start to want to identify. And if you don't want to identify as an entrepreneur, that's okay as well. Because you can still embrace that entrepreneurial spirit that we were talking about without identifying as an entrepreneur. Does that make sense? Remember, let's go back to what we were talking about. It's not the words that define you. It's who you are and who you show yourselves to be. Not all entrepreneurs own a business. So there are entrepreneurs in the room, around the place. They are full with entrepreneurial spirit, but that never transitions into having a business and owning a business. And that's okay. That's okay. They choose to be an entrepreneur in the space where they stand at the time. And we have to respect that. I didn't know I was an entrepreneur. Remember 2013? Just a measly, what, 11 years ago? I've been around working for 40 years. It didn't mean I wasn't an entrepreneur. It didn't mean that I didn't have the entrepreneurial spirit. It just meant that I did not have a business. And worse, I didn't recognize it. I was living it, I was practicing it, but I didn't know what it was. And thanks to Ye, today we're saying, recognize it in you. The mere fact that you're here, you have it, recognize it, and we're going to nurture it. Self-employed people, can either identify as entrepreneurs or business owners. The label is not what's important. So I know Youth Economy says young entrepreneurs agency. So then we all will slap, uh, I want to get in, so I'm an entrepreneur. I can say it. People can say it of you. But the reality is, remember, tune in to your own frequency. Know yourself and be yourself. Yeah? So you can identify as an entrepreneur. You can identify as a business person. I saw some people saying, but that's the same thing. She says stand as entrepreneur. Now she's saying stand as business person. That's the same thing. Huh? It's not the same thing, but it's okay to identify as either one or the other. Sorry? The difference? And I need to do it now? No, oh, okay. All right. Okay. So if I don't have to do it now, we'll get to it, yeah? Okay. <laughs> so I have a challenge for each of you. I would have asked Antabi to bring me 100 ripe bananas, but she didn't because I didn't ask her. But I'm going to give each of you a ripe banana. And the ripe banana cost one dollar and fifty cents i'm giving you some time i'm your angel investor so i'm just giving it to you you don't have to pay me one time here's your banana to start your business i want you to build a business around the banana each person build a business around the banana there is a catch though what's that once your business has started, you need to pay me back my 150. So now, no, no, no obligation. Go start your business, come up with your ideas, come up with a quick business plan. I'm giving you 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Yes, sir? One banana is your business. One banana. You don't have nothing else. You have your Selma banana. One banana. Build your business around that banana, please. Can you ask the questions? Once I don't have to give them to you, that's fine. A banana business. You said you're entrepreneurs, you're business people. Come on, opportunity. Free banana. One banana. 
once you bring in your other things, of course you can add other things. You can, you can um, consult with your neighbors, with your friends, it's fine. <laughs> Opportunity knocks, new business, free inputs, a free banana. You gonna let it pass you by? Yeah, so one banana. And Tabby, do I have your permission for anybody who is not working on a business to put them on time out? All right. I know I said 10 minutes, but it looks like most people have stopped. No? You need more time? <laughs> All right. Okay. I won't torture you anymore. Um, are there any partnerships? Yes? Where are the partnerships? I see a partnership there. Any other partnerships? Two partnerships, three partnerships, okay, four partnerships, okay, five partnerships, okay, good, six. All right, good. So, what is your banana-tastic business plan? Yes, before? No, I still gave you one banana. <laughs> You're right, I did say I give each person one banana, so you have two bananas. Yes, you're right, you're right. All right. Who wants to tell us about their first banana-tastic idea? Come on. Yeah. Come because I want everybody to hear. Hello. Again. Um, banana-tastic idea, business plan. Um, like the old saying goes, the day you plant the seed, will not be the day you harvest. So my business plan would cut the banana in half and take all those little tiny seeds and plant them. <laughs> over, over time, I will not only have one banana, but I'll have millions of banana trees. So, so I could give a, a tree and not, not just one banana. Will I get my money back? Over time. Over time? Over time. <laughs> Thank All right. you. <laughs> Why are y'all clapping? Y'all ever see a banana seed grow? Huh? <laughs> y'all clapping. Y'all ever see a banana seed grow? Oh, okay. So I'm learning something today. Entrepreneurial spirit can make the impossible possible. <laughs> All right. Anybody else come along? Yes. They do grow? Oh, I wasn't aware. Seriously? Ah, interesting. Thanks. All right, good morning again. Um, so our idea, um, say now we have a big banana. <laughs> um, yeah, so that big banana we can that we purchase for 150, we can create a banana chips, all right, and sell it for three dollars. Okay. And give you back your 150. And you still have 150. All right. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, anybody else wants to share? Come along. Good. I. You remember? Don't wait for permission. Yeah. All right. No, no, you have two I know you have two bananas. <laughs> <laughs> I you have only three dollars. Yes. Good morning, guys. Okay, so what we're going to do is very unique. Um, we're going to cut up the bananas, two of them. So instead of having 10 little slices, we'll have 20. And we'll dry them up in an oven and use risin, 
Res you that's a professional. <laughs> <laughs> resident to make jewelry. And then we go to Point Surfing when the season is open to sell our jewelry and let them know it's bananas and stuff. The jewelry will be five to ten US. <laughs> <laughs> so let me give you back your little one fifty. Yeah. <laughs> And we can use the skin as well. And we're using the skin yeah. as well. For so using the whole banana. Well. Yes. And then you'll come back okay. yeah. and invest again. Right. <laughs> okay. Floor is open. I know it's that baby idea. Don't try and come and say it's yours. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Bonjour tout le monde. This is baby Rhea. Hi Rhea. Um, so with that banana, what baby Rhea and I are going to do, we're from the Ancillary um, village. So we're going to use the banana and um, we're going to create an agro-tourism tour experience. So we'll be getting some guests from um, the Marigo Resort and we'll be taking them down to the Roseau Valley and we'll be creating a tour out of it. So we'll be teaching them the different parts of the bananas, how we go about planting it, and then we're gonna take that banana that you invested in our business, we're gonna caramelize it, and serve it to the, one, two, three, four, two couples that we have from the resort. <laughs> so, from my 200 US, I'll be able to pay you back. <laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> So I'm making banana lollipops. Um, my slogan will be a delightful suck. Um, don't laugh. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, production cost would be $2. That means I'd have to put 50 cents to create the lollipops. Our selling price will be $3.50. Then I'll be able to pay you back, of course. So you and I'd have a profit of $1.75. Okay. And I could. Okay, you are coming? Yeah. <laughs> Morning. Okay, so I was going to do a smoothie shark. Uh. <laughs> a shark on a banana? Yeah, like the name. So like the name would be like Go Bananas. Okay. And I'll make one banana protein smoothie and I'll set it at fifteen dollars, pay you back your one fifty and make a profit of thirteen fifty. Okay. <laughs> All right. So um guys she wants to go. Come come see that. <laughs> Okay, good morning, everybody. This is probably the most simplest one out of all the business ideas so far, but simply resell the banana for more and pay 150 back. Like, that's the simplest thing to do. <laughs> okay, I don't want to cut off anybody. Anybody else who wants to share their idea? Come along. And then after... Well, there is three of us, so we okay. have three bananas, so we said we we're doing banana, oats, and cranberry muffins. So we'd sell one muffin for $3, mm -hmm. so we have to pay back. $1.50? No, that's three bananas we oh, have. Yeah, yeah. For... So $4.50, mm -hmm. so we have a profit. How many no. muffins are you making? We're making 12 muffins. 12 muffins with one banana? With three bananas. Oh, okay, that's true, that's fair enough. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so my idea is very similar to the young ladies right there, right? Um, I'll have that one banana, or hopefully I can have my team to, you know, come on board with me and invest their bananas. But the idea is to simply resell that banana, but not just to anybody, okay? And not just anyhow. That banana needs to be marketed to the right individuals, because, you know, it's going to be a high-end banana. It's not just any banana, right? Because, <laughs> as the saying goes, the value of an object is determined by the price someone is willing to pay. So, my banana will not sell for $2 or $15 or $20. Okay, so don't worry. No time, we will be able to pay you back. 
<laughs> Thank you very much. All right, guys. So um, <clears throat> the idea being that with that banana, somebody asked what is the difference between an entrepreneur and a business person? Hey, now you come in. Hey, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I tried all these fancy things, and I was not, obviously not sure how it's going to work. So a businessman versus an entrepreneur. The businessman will do what everybody else is doing already. He will take the banana, put a mark up on it, and sell it for profit. It don't matter whether you sell it high-end or low-end or mid-end, that's what a business person will do. I will resell the banana. An entrepreneur will transform the banana. So they'll transform the banana into a smoothie, they'll transform it into jewelry, they'll transform it into chips, they'll transform it into a plantation, <laughs> but they will transform it. And the idea being that normally, the amount of value you add to something goes up as you transform it. Yeah? So Quincy will say it's a high-end banana, but the person just passed a low-end banana down the road. <laughs> <laughs> and we know how people are. Yeah. We know how people are. They will pay, I will pay for the low-end banana instead of the high-end banana, unless I was trying to impress somebody or something. So one of the differences between a business person, a businessman, and an entrepreneur is do you transform? If you're doing what everybody else is doing, you get a product, you're going to resell it. Business, business mindset. If you get a product or you get something and you're going to transform it, come up with something new that hasn't been done before, the banana jewelry hasn't been done before. It's new. You're thinking like an entrepreneur. Make sense? Remember, I'm going to keep pounding that idea. One is not right and the other is wrong. They're just different. An entrepreneur is different to a business person. Both have value. Yeah? All right. And Tabby tells me it's time for us to take a little break. I think that's a good point at which to take a break, and then when we come, oh, sorry, Terry, I didn't realize you had to break. Terry, I come into to break. break. Okay, <laughs> Terry, relax. I can leave this I there, right? Break to go to, for, for us to go to break. <laughs> right, folks. Enjoy the morning? Yes. I, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. You'll enjoy the morning? Yes. All right, that sounds better. Cindy, I'm trying to learn from your teaching skills. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, we are going to take a break, and our refreshments are over to this side. However, our lovely friends from NIC will also be set up just outside. We'll be breaking uh, for 15 minutes. We'll be breaking for 15 minutes, so we will be back in this room at just about 10 minutes to the hour of 11. So please refresh yourselves, enjoy yourselves, chat amongst yourselves, share notes from this morning, share learnings from this morning, and let's get ready to finish this first session strong. Um, ensure that you step just outside and have a chat with NIC as well. Thank you very much. <laughs> 